Ever wonder why some movies flop and why some films succeed? Well, sometimes it's the star of the film, and sometimes it's a good story. But in the case of John Wick Chapter 4, it's both. Keanu Reeves has been a mainstay in Hollywood since the 80s, and most of his movies are fantastically entertaining. Like last year's Top Gun Maverick, John Wick Chapter 4 seems to be winning at the box office with a massive opening weekend and winning all the accolades with banging reviews. But could this be the end? Is this truly the end of John Wick? Well, strap in, dear viewer. It's going to be a hell of a ride. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Remember, it's totally free and it's your access to loads of all new reviews I put out weekly here at Off The Cover. And without further ado, on to the video. From the moment that an overzealous gangster murdered a dog, we've been treated to some of the best films in quite some time. The John Wick series established a fascinating mythology. The world of John Wick is a global chessboard where an ancient code pits those of service to the shadowy high table against various factions. In Chapter 4, John Wick's path of vengeance forced the table into full-out war, and the movie thrives on John's acceptance of the fact that he can't win this war on his own. In the opening scene, which was highly reminiscent of Metal Gear Solid 5 and Rambo 3, we get a spectacularly cinematic horse chase through the desert, which leads to a point of no return for the high table. They must make an example out of John Wick, and that task falls to Bill Skarsgård's very willing Marquis de Gramont. With Skarsgård, we get a much more formidable enemy as he is much higher up the ladder than any of the previous villains Wick has had to dispatch to the netherworld. As he is the high table's emissary, he oozes entitlement and hypocrisy with each very French-accented word he speaks. Unlike prior villains like Santino, whose only leverage over John was a personal debt, the Marquis wields the authority of the high table itself. Skarsgård does a great job of embodying the decadence and rot that permeates the organization at each step up the ladder. John Wick may be the namesake of the franchise, but his journey through the story has increasingly emphasized the importance of his social contacts and their shared history together. That investment fully blossoms with Chapter 4's lovable cast of characters, Winston, Sharon played by the late Lance Reddick, and the Bowery King played by Lawrence Fishburne, serve as John's counsel and assistants. Two of my favorite additions to the repertoire of characters definitely have to be Kane, played by Donnie Yen, and Mr. Nobody, played by Shamir Anderson. Every time each character was on screen, they stole the show, although no one overpowered anyone else's performance. A special shout out also has to go out to Mr. Nobody's dog, who had some truly great scenes. What makes each John Wick movie so special is its expansion of the universe's mythology. In Chapter 4, we learn that John Wick has the right to challenge the Marquis to a duel. The rest of the film's plot is moved along with gathering the necessary requirements for this to happen. At each step, John must overcome obstacles, including over 200 stairs in a wonderfully choreographed scene leading to the dueling location. Now, I don't want to blow the ending for anyone, but to anyone believing what they saw on screen, not everything is as it seems. Each John Wick film in the franchise up the ante in absolutely every single aspect, including the villains. My intuition tells me that we are still set for at least one more sequel because John Wick must eventually face the high table itself, not just portions of it. This has to be a spectacle all its own, and of course, it has to outdo every single film before it. I say we're in for a real treat in the next few years. Not that this film wasn't a treat. Another thing that makes the John Wick franchise so enjoyable, besides Keanu Reeves, is the fight choreography. As I mentioned before, the stair sequence with Wick ducking under the banister back and forth as he fights his way up is just spectacular. Also, while the movie had plenty of gun fu, we got our fair share of swordplay, which was a nice addition to the franchise. The John Wick universe has created and stuck to a set of rules that continue on since the very beginning. This is something that's missing from movies today. Movies, 
superhero ones especially, set some rules and forget about them five minutes later. It's really frustrating. The John Wick series is refreshing because you immediately know what the rules are from the previous movies. And speaking of which, Mr. Nobody's dog pays respect in a soft nod to the first film's canine companion. What a nice touch. Overall, John Wick Chapter 4 pretty much bested each one of its predecessors. It is the longest John Wick movie, it is the most John Wick movie, and it's simply the best one yet. You just can't hate it, and the results speak for themselves. In its opening weekend alone, it earned more than the Shazam sequel did in two weekends. People want good stories, good characters, and most of all, good old-fashioned fun, which John Wick always delivers. This definitely has to be 2023's version of Top Gun Maverick. Fun for everyone. Now, when do you think Keanu Reeves will team up with Tom Cruise? If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more great content.